Hello and welcome to Sorox's classes. Today we'll discuss the global versus local approach to any decision making. Now, what does that mean? Now, if you observe that even for a simple scenario, simple scenario, like for example, you want to invite some friends to dinner and let's say there are 10 of them, 4 are veg and 6 are non-veg and you have to decide on the menu. Now what will you do? The obvious answer is you will keep an assortment of food items which can be consumed by both veg and non-veg people and then you might have some speciality for only the veg and some specialities only for the non-veg. Now observe that when you do this kind of a problem solving or this kind of a situation handling you always tend to think about these food items which can be consumed by both kind of people. That means you are approaching the, the situation or the problem from a global perspective. Global means which is applicable to the entire population. And then you also have some local aspects which are specialty items for each one of these. Now this is exactly what is the principle of global versus local approach does for any kind of decision making situations. Let's see what it means. Now suppose you are a company who sells four products A, B, C and D and A and B are low, va low value products which means they are less costly and they, they sell in large volumes, high volumes and C and D are products which are high value but low volume like jewelry items for example. They are high value products but low volumes whereas cosmetics for example they are less costly but sell in large volumes. So let's say you are a company who is selling these four kind of products and you want to add one more product to your product portfolio. Now what are the decision criteria that you need to consider? So first and foremost you have to understand that you are looking for overall profit to be maximized and that is nothing but revenue minus expenses. Now let us assume that you have only one factory where you are manufacturing these four products. So your expenses, especially the fixed ones like rent, wages, these are common expenses that are shared by all of these products and there are few expenses like raw materials which are specific to each of the products. So that means that going with by the previous example there are some common factors between all the products and there are some special factors for each of the products and obviously your revenue is price into number of products sold and price is again uh, price is again specific to each product and the number is specific to each one of them. So now if I want to add one more product into this category what are the decision points or what are the criteria that I need to consider. The first criteria is around the revenue because that is the key driver of my profit. 
So, so how will it impact my revenue? Now, now, product E can compete with one of my existing products. So, I have to understand whether product E is related or closely associated with one of these products. So, let's assume that product E is very similar to A and B. Same type. That means low value and high volume. So, then the question arises that if I start selling E, will it impact my sales of A or B? So, for example, I might be dealing with uh, two, two kinds of soaps, soap 1 and 2, and I am introducing another soap, soap 3. So, will soap 3 impact the sales of soap 1 and soap 2? If it does, then I have to see whether my overall profit from these three varieties will be maximized if I introduce E, which means that whether price of 1 into number of units of soap 1 sold plus price of 2 into number of units of 2 plus price of 3 into number of units of 3, whether this whole number of uh, whole number which is the total revenue will increase or decrease and this is my first decision point this is called cannibalization which means that one product is is eating up the sales of another product now if this is not the case and the product E is not related to any of these. For example, A and B are two types of soaps and product E is a cosmetic item. So, they are not related. So, in that case, I have to see the next criteria which is my resources. So, as I said, I have only one factory, so I have limited space. So, if I introduce E, how much of that space will be consumed by E? And how much of other resources like labor, time, etc. will be consumed by E? So, even, even though these two are not related products, but they, have, they might have common resources. which might be competing for the, uh, competing between both of them so second is common resources so the answer to, to the question of whether I, I should introduce product E or not is if there is a chance of cannibalization which means if E is uh, related to A and B then I have to see what is the impact on the total revenue. And if not, then I have to see what is the impact on common resources. Now, of course, if, the, if E is related to B, A and B also, then also I have to see the impact of common resources. But if they are not, then the question of cannibalization or, you know, one product eating into another product does not arise, so this will not be required, but then I have to see the impact on the common resources. So these are the two decision points on which I have to decide whether I will introduce this product. Let's look at another example of global versus local. Now suppose I have three plants, A, B and C, manufacturing one product and I have, let's say, three warehouses, D, E and F, and I can supply from any plant to any warehouse. 
I can supply from this to E or to D or to F and so on. Now the question is what should be my combination of plant and warehouses that will maximize my profit. Now how do I approach this problem? Now for this I will need two things. One is what is the total capacity of each plant? Let's say this is CA, CB and CC. These are the total capacities. And what is the total capacity of each warehouse? Which is capacity of E, capacity of D and capacity of F. And each of these values cannot cross a total of the total capacities, which means if my uh, production capacity of plant A is 100 and I decide to send 40 units here, 20 units here, then I cannot send more than 40 units here. This is the maximum. So this is one limiting condition. The other limiting condition is this one. For example, warehouse F, this receives to, uh, 40 from A, 30 from B and 20 from C and its total capacity is 100 storing capacity, then it is fine. But it cannot receive more than 30 from C. So these are the bounding or boundary conditions. And I also need to know what would be the, the cost of transferring one unit of good to each one of these warehouses from each plant. So let's say if this is 10 rupees, this is 15 rupees, this is 20 rupees and so on, 25, 10 and so on, then I have to consider the scenario in which my total cost will be minimum. So my profit would be maximized. So therefore, I will have to consider the sum of all these uh, units multiplied by the cost. So product supplied from A to E number of units, let's say A to E number of units into A to E cost plus A to D number of units plus A to D cost sorry multiplied by A to D cost and so on I have to consider all these values and that would add up to my total cost and if I have to minimize this cost I have to minimize this sum so that would be subject to these boundary conditions so this is how we decide on what to supply from which plant to which warehouse. Similarly, from which warehouse to which customer. And this is called the basics of linear programming. Linear programming, which is nothing but a mathematical way of determining the right set of choices between certain set of plants, certain set of warehouses or certain set of warehouses and certain set of customers subject to certain boundary conditions. So this is again a question of a global versus local view because I am looking at the overall cost structure rather than looking at individual ones. Now let us take another example of global versus local. Let's say I have uh, five customers and I manufacture one product and my five customers A, B, C, D and E buys products regularly from me and this is their buying pattern 15, 25, 30. So this is the daily or let's say weekly consumption of the product by each of my customers. Now in a particular week, let's say customer C 
suddenly calls me up and tells me that he wants to buy 60 units of that product. Now, let's say I have a total capacity of, of 100 and I am consuming a total of I am consuming a total of 100 out here and I have an additional demand of 45 units. Now what options do I have? There are two options. One is I can buy the product. Two is I can make the product. Now if I want to make the product I would have to I would have to add capacity here because I don't have capacity I have to add manpower capacity manpower I have to get raw materials to make the product myself but I don't have time because the customer is not willing to wait so I, ha I don't have a choice but to buy the product it might happen that I, I decide to buy the product from my nearest competitor also and serve my customer. Now why am I doing this? I am doing this because I know that this time he has ordered 60 means he is happy with my product and he might order more in the future. So I have a potential of more business. So therefore, I am taking a global view here, that means futuristic view, in incurring an additional cost to buy that product because obviously the, the cost of the product when I am buying from the market would be more than if I make it myself. But I am doing it because I want to secure more business in the future. I am taking a futuristic view and I am not looking at my local or immediate or temporary loss, a loss in profit I would say. So this is another example where you can take a, a global or a long term view rather than taking a short term view and take a decision to supply him the additional demand that he is asking for by getting it from the market. Let's take another case of global versus local decision making. Now let's assume that I am dealing with five customers again A, B, C, D and E and A and B are my top customers. That means let's say they give me 80% of my business and CD and E combined gives me 20% and A and B places orders on a regular basis, regular orders or regular customers and C, C, D and E they place orders not so regularly or occasionally. Now this is the scenario, let's say A and B buys 100 units each from me per month and C, D and E buys 20, 10 and 30 units on a monthly basis. So I know that A and B are customers who are loyal to me and they give me bulk of my business. Now, in a particular month, suddenly customer E wants 100 units and I don't have capacity and I don't have any other supplier who can supply the product. So I am the only supplier for that product. 
so i don't have the option of you know buying from the market and fulfilling his demand so that is not possible here the only possibility is i cut down a part of this and i supply you know that to him so that in the in the future he might order more from me or i have to straight away say no to him now what should i do now in this particular case and as i explained in the previous example that in such cases you have to take uh, decisions which should give you long term benefits so in this particular case what is my long term view my long term view would be first to protect the interest of my loyal customers and having done that then if i have a choice to buy from the market and fulfill the extra demand i would have done that but since i don't have that choice i will straight away say no to him in this case because i don't have an option and cutting down from the loyal customers is out of question why because in future he may or may not order but these two will definitely order so never never compromise on your loyal customers so that is what global versus local means let's take another example from our own life let's say i'm working in a company and i'm getting a salary of 5 lakhs per annum and i have a 20% hike every year so if i continue in this way in the next 10 years my salary will keep increasing by 20% each year and i have cleared the cat exam and i got an offer from i am amdabad and i have to undergo a two year course where i'll have to spend around 50 lakhs including all expenses and uh, thereafter i am expected to have a salary of 15 lakhs per annum and the same logic applies 20% increase for the rest of the 8 years now the question is which option to go for if i choose the first option i will have a constant salary or constantly increasing salary for the next 10 years if i choose the second option i have to shell out a quite hefty amount initially but then i will have a higher salary at the end of 2 years which will continue to increase again so in this case you have to see which one makes more logical sense or sense from a monetary perspective over a period of 10 years so if i consider the first one i will get 5 lakhs and then 6 lakhs and then 7.2 lakhs so it's a increase of 20% over a 10 year period so you can calculate this in terms and in the second case i have to shell out 50 for the first two years and then from the third year onwards i will have a salary of 15 lakh then 18 lakhs and so on for 8 years so it is very clearly evident that for the year from 3rd to 10th my salary would be substantially higher more than double then my salary if i continue in this job and this is at least around 8 lakhs into 8 years which is 64 lakhs the value would be actually more than that and i am shelling out 50 lakhs plus 11 lakhs which i would have got a salary 
for these two years. So I'm I'm losing a total of 61 lakhs, whereas I'm gaining more than 64. If you calculate this, this this would come up to be 80 to 90 lakhs. So it is very clear that if I take a long term view, then going for an MBA is a is a better option. But if I take a short term view just for two years, then obviously continuing in this job is a better better choice. So this again is a is a case where you have to think about how many year horizon you are looking at and decide on what would be the best choice based on that horizon. So your global becomes global with respect to the number of years that you are looking at. So these are some of the cases of global versus local decision making and there are many more in, in real life, especially in corporate life where you have to take such decisions and in each case you have to consider what is the global view, what is the local view, does your local view meet some of the urgent needs that you are looking at, maybe for example in this case you might require 10 lakhs immediately for a personal emergency so then you cannot you cannot do this because you need this money and you have no other source of income so those are rare cases and uh, those should be dealt with in 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 their perspective but for most of it, of the cases you have to take a global view so that you benefit in the long run so this is about global and local decision making. If you have any questions, please do send us. We will be more than happy to guide you.